Hi guys, I'm Lozzy and welcome to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be talking specifically about what I'm writing and I'm recording an album was like. Now back in 2015 I was in a band, we played a few shows, we've written a few songs and we decided amongst ourselves we'd really like to make an album or an EP. But we wanted to go somewhere that had kind of a reputation for good quality. We looked at several studios but in the end we decided all together that we'd be happy to go to a place called the Outhouse Studios in Reading. The reason we decided to go here was because not only did they have like a wealth of absolute like brilliant bands that have recorded there before, which I'm sure I'll go through later on in the video, but it just seemed like the right setting. So we'd all decided that this is what we're going to do. Unfortunately, about two or three weeks before we're due to go to the Outhouse Studios in Reading, one of our members of the band pulls out. Now I know you're thinking classic classic singer or lead guitarist move it was neither of them no it's the rhythm guitarist that let us down he wasn't happy with the price he felt that we could get it done cheaper which we could have done absolutely there's no gripes with him about that he was right we could have got it done cheaper somewhere else but it's about the quality it's about the environment it's about how you feel comfortable going somewhere that's fine he didn't want to do it he could have said it earlier on but he didn't so we got together as remaining members of the band and we just said to each other, look, we still want to do this, we've got the money, we've got less money than we did have, but we've still got enough money that we can still do it. I would play some of the rhythm guitar parts and the lead guitarist would take some of the rhythm guitar parts that we've now lost with a member leaving the band. So in November 2015, I remember it was a really, I don't remember exactly what day it was or what date it was, but it was, I know it was really early in the morning We'd set off, we picked up all the gear that we needed and we crammed it into my Peugeot 207. I've still got to this day, so it's lived through a few experiences, that car. Anyway, we got all the equipment we possibly can. We got all the band members I could possibly fit. I think the drummer had his dad take him there separately with all the drum kit in there because there's no fucking way that was getting my car. Uh, anyway, after about a three and a half hour, four hour drive for stops and people need to take a piss and went for a bite to eat, all that usual shit. We got there, we got it read in, we found the place, and now it was time to get down to business. Upon arriving, we're instantly greeted by a guy called John. Now he's the owner of the studio, and let me just tell you, this man oozes legendary status. He's so easy going, so easy to talk to, so approachable, and he just made us feel welcome straight away. I do want to just take this point to apologise for the lighting. I can't control the sun. John made us feel so at ease and, you know, we were on edge because no one in the band had recorded anything like this in a place like this before. So we're a little bit on edge, we're a little bit nervous, as you would expect, but he just made us feel at ease straight away and that's one of the best points and the best things he could have done to us or said to us at that point. Shortly after that we met a guy called Simon who again was an absolute fucking joy to be around. Again he just compounded this this brilliant feeling we had going in there. He made everything easy, explained what he does. He was like the assistant producer and engineer so he knew what he was doing. He'd been training for a few times and also he'd been in a few bands so he kind of knew what we were feeling like which is great because he, again, made us feel at ease as well and just compounded that that feeling of just all the dread and all the nervousness just like seeping away and dropping off. We'd laugh and joke with him, we became very comfortable with him. This is why so many bands have come to record it because it's easy, they make it feel like just not a chore. And I mentioned earlier on in the video that I would go through some of the bands. Let me just give you a little taste of some of the bands who have recorded or the recording studio has done work for. You meet six architects, Lionel Atlantis, Enter Shikari, The Blackout, Asia, Don Broco, Neck Deep, Death Havana, Alter Bridge, Exit 10, Funeral for a Friend, McFly. Well, they've done work for McFly, so that, that goes against them. Outhouse Studios lived up to their reputation. It was a joy to be there. Every step of the process was stress-free, in my personal opinion. There was some stress, personal stresses with like people getting stuff wrong. I mean, I got a little bit agitated at myself because I was playing something wrong and I couldn't remember it correctly. And it was a bit upsetting because it was the song that I had written entirely by myself. And I was like, I should know this one. But after a while, we, we just said, 
okay let's scrap it for today we'll do something else and we'll move on and we'll do it tomorrow the rest of it was absolutely fine we did it the next day no issues the place really made us feel like it was like a team effort we had enough money to go through with the recording but we didn't have enough money to go and stay in a hotel because the studio itself there is no accommodation there so john was kind enough to let us sleep in the actual studio in like air mattresses and fucking sleeping bags it was like we were at a festival recording our own album it felt kind of weird but really good at the same time but no matter what if you're recording and you're looking to record an album or any sort of music production 80% of the time this is probably what you're gonna experience and you do have to know this because if you go into it and you're like no I'm gonna do it whatever it's gonna be sick I'm just gonna play this song it's gonna be fucking recorded and it's gonna be so cool you're gonna be playing the same fucking bit of the same song so many times you will probably come out hating most if not all of the songs you've written and like i say it could make you actually dislike the music that you've written and there's no wonder why because you go through it so many times re-record it re-record it re-record it replay it replay it replay it try and add effects to it so you're listening to the same bit of music and it's going to drive you mental so normally you'll record the drums first everything is layered upon layer so it's like the drums then you've got uh, bass guitar vocals lead guitar rhythm guitar then you go through every single one and before you move on to the next one you add effects you add effects to the snare drum to the bass to the cymbals there's so many tweaking bits that go on in recording that i think a lot of people don't actually realize not only are they so knowledgeable but they're, they're very helpful they'll suggest things i mean they suggested things on a couple of songs they even said well, what about if you try this what about if you try that I think this would sound good if you did that. Those sort of suggestions and input are invaluable, especially when you reach like a, a stage where you start to doubt yourself, because there are going to be doubts. Like, I don't know, this didn't doesn't sound as good as I wanted it to sound in my head, or it doesn't sound as good as it did when I played it back home. We spent most of the time with Simon, who was the assistant engineer and producer, but John would come in and give his input and try and help us as much as possible. He obviously had other clients to help as well. Now we managed to re now we managed to record about seven songs in nine days, which I think is pretty fucking good going considering most bands would be given like two, three, maybe even four weeks to record an album, and we were maybe three or four songs off doing that. So I think seven songs in nine days is a pretty good going. Like I said. But that's testament to both John and Simon who were always there to kind of remind us of you know you do have to be mindful of how much time you've got so there's not a lot of procrastinating you can do and being indecisive but you should choose that and stick to it and see how it goes if you want to change it quickly that's fine anyway we finished the nine days of recording and we loved the final product and I still do to this day we were looking forward to going out and play some shows and releasing our music to people but unfortunately, just before we were about to do that, soon after going to the studio, the band broke down. Uh, I won't go into detail because I don't want to drag stupid stories in and fucking bitchy stories and all that shit. But there was good reason for why the band kind of dissipated. But the thing that I take away from it is that despite that, it doesn't fill me with regret. It doesn't make me feel like it was a waste of time which I think is testament to ourselves as re recording and actually going through that process and saving up all the money from the gigs. But it's also testament to the guys at Outhouse Studios. They made us feel so welcome and easy, gave input, gave it when needed, gave us advice. That is what contributed to us being happy with the final product. There are several reasons why I don't think it was a waste of time. Number one, because it remains one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life and it gave me a kind of glimpse into what my dream of becoming a musician was going to be like. Two, because still to this day, like I said, I'm largely happy with what we created despite the inexperience that we all had in writing and recording music. And three, and probably most importantly, I actually met my current girlfriend through doing this. She was invited to come as a photographer and film a few bits for the band. 
and we ended up just clicking straight away. So I'm always going to have a fond memory of this. One bit of advice I would give to anyone who's going into recording music for the first time is go with someone you're comfortable with or you feel like you're going to be comfortable with because you can really never know, I get that. Go with something that just feels right. So you have to take in quite a lot of factors. You know, you have to take in location, how are you going to get there, how are you going to get equipment there, etc, etc. How, how much is it going to cost? Obviously, that's the thing that drives most business. How much experience do they have and what experience are you looking for them to have in terms of what bands or what artists they've worked with, what type of genres do they specialise in. These things really you know, come together in making your decision. But what I would say is you're going to have hardships, it's very rare for any recording to go absolutely smoothly as possible. I really can't emphasize how good our whole studios were and I really can't recommend them enough so if you are interested I'll put the details uh, in the description and on the screen now for you um, they're, all I can say is they're so professional and they're so well worth uh, the money that we paid at the time we paid uh, in the thousands of pounds to have those seven songs recorded over nine or ten days anyone who's going to record anything I wish you luck I hope you all the best in the future because it's it's gonna be such a good experience for you it sounds as if this video is kind of more of like an experience video it's me kind of recounting memories and going through my history of recording and and initially what was my dream as like a teenager to become a musician I'd still love to be it now so if you if you like the video give it a like if you like I said if you are going to record stuff best of luck to you uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already click that notification bell to um, do something and I'll see you in the next one bye bye for now From the window, making racing brighter. Every taste is sour, every siren louder. All as the feeling fades. The voices they come piling in. The lips are moving, I hear nothing. Every step becomes sharper, every morning voice harder. And so the trouble begins It's a waste of time You know I'm lost to the last line Cause when it calls me by my name I'm powerless but to be the same Upon these walls I climb Trying to shake these remnants of mine Lost in this place and the feeling